In this video, we will discuss swaps, in particular, the plain vanilla fixed for floating interest rate swap. The motivation for a bank or other financial institution for signing such an agreement is to reduce their interest rate risk. In the late 70s, early 80s, many savings and loans went bankrupt in the United States, and primarily what caused that bankruptcy was interest rate risk. Savings and loans were restricted to only collecting money through deposit accounts and making 30-year fixed rate home loans. If you consider a savings and loan, making a 30-year fixed rate home loan in 1960 at 5%, then that loan would be on their books all the way up to 1990. During the 1970s, inflation in the United States skyrocketed, and this graph shows efforts by the Federal Reserve to fight that by raising interest rates, with the Fed funds rate getting close to 20% in the early 80s when Paul Volcker was fighting inflation. If the savings and loan had issued such a loan, as interest rates go up, the value of their fixed portfolio or home loans dropped drastically, they lost a lot of money, and many of them went bankrupt. One way of mitigating this problem would have been to sign a fixed for floating interest rate swap that would have converted their fixed rate loans into floating rate loans. To see how this would work, we consider a swap with a notional principle of $100 million. Under that condition, the fixed side would pay the floating rate side based on a set interest rate, in this case 12%. We're going to look at a swap for five years with payments every six months, so it would be 6% or 6 million every six months. The floating rate side would be based on LIBOR, the London Interbank Offer Rate, which is the cost of capital for large banks, and it would always be based again on the six-month rate of LIBOR divided by two. So the fixed rate side is always $6 million, 6% of $100 million. The floating rate side is going to be determined six months ahead of time by LIBOR divided by two. So right here, LIBOR is six, the next payment is six million. Right here, LIBOR is five, the next payment is five million. Or again, the six month LIBOR times the notional principle. So we calculate the LIBOR payments for all the time periods the fixed payments stay the same, and the payment actually made is going to be 1 minus the other, in this case 0, in this case 6 minus 5 or 1 million, 6 minus 5.5 or 500,000 for all time periods. We're looking at a time period when first interest rates drop and then interest rates go up. One way of valuing such a swap is by taking the difference between the value of a fixed rate bond with all of these future payments minus the value of a floating rate bond. As interest rates drop, the value of the fixed rate bond first goes up, and again we value this with the standard present value function using our interest rate, which is LIBOR, D8 in this case, times the number of payments remaining every six months. There was initially a total of 10, minus the period at which takes place, one, two, three, etc. Each payment is for a fixed amount of $6 million, and then the final bullet payment of the notional principle of $100 million. So the fixed rate bond is going to increase and decrease in value. As interest rates first drop, the value of the fixed rate goes up, and as interest rates then increase, the value of the fixed rate goes down. The floating rate bond, on the other hand, at least right after a payment is made, will always be the notional principle of 100 million, since the next payment is always set to be LIBOR. So the value that one side owes the other can always be just the floating rate side minus the fixed rate side, or vice versa. So initially, when the contract is signed, no money changes hands, so the value of the contract is zero. Then initially interest rates drop, the fixed rate bond goes up, the floating rate bond stays the same. The difference between the two is $7 million, and that would be what the fixed rate side owes the floating rate side. Then as interest rates go up, 
the value of the fixed rate bond drops drastically, and now floating owes fixed $12,679,000. This continues until the swap expires, then the value to either party again returns to zero. If you want to know more about the savings and loan fiasco and other monetary issues, I have an article at the Foundation for Economic Education on monetary policy disasters of the 20th century. Thank you for watching this video.